Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, in the last video we finished up the fab work and we got most of the power supply wiring done. Hopefully we'll be able to get all that done in this video and then the final video will wire up all the signal path stuff. So let's get busy hooking up wiring. So we got these tag strips and the capacitors installed and a couple of little tricks I did. I glued these nuts to the tag strips and then I had to grind a little off the top of this nut to get it to clear this wire on both sides. And then again on this one I scraped all the paint and powder coat off of the chassis so we get a really good solid ground. And we soldered this ground wire that goes between this ground point and this ground point. So the next thing we need to do is I want to connect these two heater wires and I'm going to connect them to the bottom terminals in this tag strip so we free up the top part here to use for our other connections. So we're going to come in here. We don't want to pull it tight, but we don't want a lot of slack either. And we need to first twist these up. Do not forget to do this. I've forgotten on other amplifiers and ended up with noise. Okay. So even though these are really short, it does help to have them twisted. So there's that one. And then I'm going to cut that one about right there. And then we're going to come up here and strip these off. And we're going to come in here and tin both of these so we don't have any stray strands. Like that. And then come in here and poke this one through. That bottom hole and that one through the other bottom hole. Come in here and solder these two guys to this lower connection on this tag strip. that and then do the same thing so I'm gonna pull this out a little bit to make sure that we're soldering the lead and not having the insulation in the hole I've done that before and it looks like it's connected and it's really not Just like that. And now we have our heaters connected to these terminals, but they're down here low, so we got plenty of room to work up here. And as you can see, we're spending a little extra effort on this part of the build so that it makes the rest of it go really easy. And this is one of the harder parts of the build, getting all of this stuff connected. But as you can see, we've squeezed the whole power supply into this little corner over here on the amplifier. And now we have all this room over here to work. And given this is an SE amp, it's not a whole lot more wiring going to be over here in this whole part of the amp than there was squeezed into this side. So we do have the center tap soldered to this terminal right here. So now we need to get these two high voltage wires figure out how long they need to be, and we're going to solder 
a diode onto the end of this wire, put some heat shrink tubing on it, and then solder it to this terminal right here. So we come in here. We know these diodes are about this long. So we're going to cut the wires about right there. And again, we're going to make sure these are twisted. I'm going to come in here and strip back just a little bit of the insulation. We don't need a whole lot. About like that. And then give us a little, a little twist. And then again, we're going to tin these leads. And try to do it where you leave a little blob of solder on there. And you'll see why in a minute. Like that. Where you've got kind of a little blob of solder left on there. So now we're going to take these diodes. We want the stripe towards the tag. We're going to come in here and just like that. Now we got the two diodes soldered on the end of the wire. If you see a little extra solder, you can. Clip it off. If you try to come in here with the soldering iron to clean that off, it's going to just unsolder those and they're going to fall off. So then we come in with a little heat shrink tubing. And I try to leave at least half the diode sticking out of the heat shrink tubing. These diodes are really oversized for what we're doing, so I don't expect them to have problems with them getting hot. And this is just a little technique I use to shrink tubing. Just use the hot part of the iron just, just back from the tip, and here we go. So now these two diode leads... me twist it up like that and they're going to connect to that terminal right there so we clip those off bend those over Make a little hook on the end of it like that. Hook it through. And then crimp it with the pliers. And there's our two diodes connected. Now what we need to do is... Here are two choke wires. We're going to run this one up here to this same terminal. So we want to trim it off. About like that. It's always better to leave it a little long than cut it too short and go, oh man, now it won't fit. I promise guys, this gets a lot easier after this this connection here. This one's a little tricky. Put something through here to hold that wire up. 
and come in here and solder this connection. And there we go. Now we got the two diodes that make up the half wave rectifier and it's feeding this first filter cap and then this lead is going over to our choke. Then this other wire from the choke goes to here and then we're going to put that resistor from here to here and then we should have our B plus. So let's connect this one up. And it's not going to hurt anything to twist these a little bit too, even though this should be fairly filtered at this point. And then it kind of holds this wire down here out of the way too. So let's cut this one off. here. Strip this back. Okay, then we have our choke wire there. Then the last thing we want to do is put this second dropping resistor. That's the RC part of the filtering. It's going to go like that. And that. Then let me solder that up and that'll be completing our power supply. And on this connection here, I just soldered the resistor right at the top of this tack strip hole and left this open because we're going to be connecting some wires from here over to another tack strip over here when we get to wiring up the plates of the other tubes. So this looks like a good place to wrap this up right here. I've got some parts on order and we'll get back to this probably first of next week. Well, it's nice to see this thing starting to come to life. And I think that in the next video, it might take two. We're going to get all the signal wiring done and get this thing ready to be tested. This is a good DIY project. This one that I did before was a little compact and a little tight working space to be a good beginner's project. Plus, hooking up all those wires, those nine pin tubes is kind of difficult. These compactron tubes they got a little bigger circle of wiring to work in, and given that we're not using all of the pins, there's a little more working room inside this amp. Plus, this one's going to be kind of a wider use range than this is. This is a pretty narrow range use product, given the low kind of fleet power that it's got, where this one could be used almost as your main listening amp if you have, you know, really efficient speakers. So anyway... Thanks for watching. Hope you're enjoying my content. If you are, please subscribe. Please like the video. That helps a lot. I appreciate all you folks that are Patreon members and also the generous folks that have donated to my website. This really helps me be able to afford products and keep this channel rolling. So, until next time, have a nice day. Mm -hmm.